It has been a huge time jump for me, probably a month since I got my TerraMaster uh, hybrid SSD and hard drive NAS. It's set up, ready to go, been using it. Uh, I didn't want to, I did like some, there'll be parts of this video that have the when I was setting it up and there'll be parts of it that I just did right now because I just wanted to use it for a while, um, just get a hang of it. Now, I'm not framing this video for the sysadmin, like the sysadmin high level tech people who are like, you know, you create your own NAS. Like this is not who this is for. This video here is for beginner users and intermediate users. But I think there is a huge market out there for people, uh, of people who are beginner users and intermediate users who are not using NAS products who should. I'm talking about people who are just like your average day-to-day -day person, not necessarily in tech field, creative types at all, anything like that, who want to protect their data, don't want to rely on necessarily the cloud that can be compromised, is expensive, invasive, etc or want to have an auxiliary, something to complement that, that's also in-house as well. Keep their data and their pictures and their life safe. Okay, shrunk myself down there. First of all, it's a reasonable price. Uh, it's on sale right now. It's a fairly new one. It'll go on sale up and down, whatever, but uh, it's 509 right now on their website. I've seen it around this price. And just be aware, I don't normally tell people like, buy, 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 you have to buy right now, but we're at the very end of 2025, we're going to 2026. We all know, and if you don't, you know now, we're in a RAM apocalypse, memory, RAM, and we're going into a storage apocalypse as well. Uh, prices of RAM is up like 500, 600%. I'm not exaggerating. Uh, you can go from like what was a $100 kit to 500 to $1,000 now. So the price of all of these products is going to go through the roof. I'll put some links in the video description down below. Um, if I can find affiliate links or something, I'll do that. If not, just whatever. I'll just put some whatever ones, but buy now. Uh, this product has been really good. I've been enjoying it quite a bit. It has a good processor, N150, modern processor, quad core, eight threads, more than enough for what you're going to do with this thing. It comes shipped with 16 gigabytes of RAM, which for the average user, the people who I'm targeting for this video, uh, it's going to be more than enough. You don't necessarily need to upgrade that. So you buy in, you're good. I used to be very intimidated by NAS products. Not anymore. I actually did my first review of a NAS product from TerraMaster. They sent one over, uh, and this is a new one that they sent over. They want to show this one off. This one's really sweet because it has four hard drive bays. One, two, three, four hard drives, slower bulk storage, and it has room for three NVMEs as well for cash or for fast storage. And you can also do all kinds of other stuff too. And the specs of this thing are pretty impressive. I started this filming this video like two months ago. And I decided, you know what, for a change, I'm really going to just use this product for a while. Probably, like I recorded a lot in the beginning, but I was just like, you know what, let's just use this thing for like a month and come back. So a recipe for disaster for me because I can very easily accidentally overwrite them or lose them. And I've done that. Um, it was actually just a data corruption. It happened about a year ago. Um, and it was actually right before, yeah, it was about a year ago before I got into like actual NAS storage. And then I lost, I lost a lot actually. And uh, I was pretty upset about that. And actually, I think, it, I think it was TerraMaster who contacted me first, like of all the brands. I'm pretty sure it was. And they were like, do you want to do a NAS? And I was like, I was super intimidated by NAS products at the time. Uh, and they contacted me and I was like, I guess I can review it, but it's going to be noob level. And they were like, that's what we want. And then now I'm into it. So there we go. Now it's pretty decked up. Two, two, and two. Okay, here we are. Uh, I'm going to use my phone to do this. Uh, I've done it in the past, but uh, let's go back and do it again. Uh, okay, so let's go like that there. Okay, so I switched over to the computer. Uh, I did the initial, initial initialization on the phone, and you can follow through the whole thing. Uh, it just runs through, reboots, and then it pops in. And that's good. I installed this, the TNAS PC for Windows. You don't have to, uh, you can if you want, but I did that. And then it pops up here with your uh, NAS. Okay, so it's been a couple weeks now, probably almost three weeks now. I've just been messing with this thing. I just wanna go ahead and give you a rundown of how I use it and what I like about it and that kind of stuff. Now I'm approaching this product as a uh, I'd say like intermediate level, low to intermediate level user in terms of NAS, but I rely on them a lot. And I'm promoting a NAS, like the idea of a NAS in general to the average consumer who is doing anything with tech. Um, I think that NAS are products that people like me who do what I do, it's essential. Like if you're a creator of any type, uh, YouTuber, graphic designer, video editor, 
videographer, photographer, whatever it is you do, like this type of stuff, you're going to be producing a lot of data and it's very important to you. It's your well-being. I think it's this is fundamentally, critically important to get an ads. There's no option. You have to get one. It's just, you know, when you get it, how you get it, this kind of stuff you can decide. But I think it's critically important to have this. Um, there's also just like the average person. Like the average person can get something like this and really benefit from what a NAS offers. Honestly, it can really benefit them. It's your stuff. Don't rely on the cloud. We'll just put it that way. We know what's going on now. Like the whole smoke and mirrors of like everything is safe online with the big mega corporation. Okay, that's bullshit. So uh, don't rely on that. You can still use the cloud, but don't trust it as your like primary backup. That's an insane thing to do. Anyways, so it's been a while. I don't know when I started this video, probably two to three weeks ago. It might have even been a month, and I've just been playing around with this thing, uh, and I'm going to show you why it's dope. So when you come in here, you install TNAS for PC or Mac or whatever, and you just run it. It will find your NAS, and it will tell you. You can tell it, okay, well, I have a NAS now. It will look for it. So we'll come in here. We'll just go back to square one. Once it's set up and on your network, it'll just find it. Um, you just click on that, you log in, and then you have access to your access to your front end here. We're going to go into the TOS desktop. In the TOS desktop, it's a desktop like a, like Windows or like I guess your iPad or your Mac or whatever or Linux if you're a higher level user. Uh, it's the same thing. Um, so this is actually running on the desk on the NAS over there. It's a little computer, so it's running over there. It's not running on my computer. The browser is just showing it. In here, you can do all your management stuff. Uh, I've already created some stuff, but um, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, if you really want to get into the technicalities of doing this, there's a lot you can do in these things. Uh, resource managers, all that stuff. You can really get to the find, like into the weeds of it and figure out what's going on, how this stuff's running. But I think the average person who I'm telling should get a NAS isn't going to care about a lot of this stuff. What you are going to care about is your storage. So I've already set this thing up. We have the four hard drives and we have three NVMEs in there right now. I'm going to actually like probably get rid of one of these. I've already created the storage pool, the hard drive storage pool. I'm not going to get rid of that because I've already done it. Uh, it was very straightforward. I just put in my four hard drives. One of them is a redundancy. So I have 16 plus 16 plus 16, which gives us approximately that much storage there. And then the last one is a redundancy. So if something goes wrong on these, one of these ones, I don't lose my data like I did last time. I'm going to leave this one alone because I have files on it. Uh, this one I am going to get rid of. This is my S SSD one. I'm going to get rid of it just so I can show you. So what I intend to do with this is I'm going to have my hard drive in a volume here, storage pool volume, just its own thing. And that's going to be where I use a lot of my data. Like I move video files onto there. I leave them on there. Um, and then potentially pulling stuff off from time to time. So my video stuff will be on there. All my personal stuff is going to be on there. I will access those more frequently, like pulling stuff on, putting stuff on, but they're not biggest files. That's fine. And then I'm also going to have the NVMe storage pool, which is still deleting for some reason. Uh, and this one over here is going to be used specifically to uh, be a kind of a scratch drive. And so what do I mean by a scratch drive? Well, the hard drives are going to be for slower storage, um, more things that I'm going to be accessing routinely. Once you get stuff on them, they're really fast. But the NVMe is going to be where I dump stuff. Take most of these files when I have a huge dump off of the laptop NVMe and dump all of them onto my NAS, but I'm going to dump them into the SSDs, the fast storage. So if we come in here, I have my hard drives here. And then I have my fast SSDs here. I want to dump all of them onto the SSDs here, very fast storage, throw them in there, not necessarily sorted or anything like that. I, once they're up there, okay, now they're on there, they're quick. Then I can decide where I want to put them into the hard. So I'm going to create a new storage pool. You can do it from here or volumes, but you're going to come in here and I'm going to say storage pool and I'm going to take these three. I have an external hard drive. I don't want that involved. You can, but I'm not going to do that. Um, so I'm going to take the three MVMEs, MVME one, two, three, and you can have them individual if you want. So the individual drives, you can have them in a T-RAID where you have the two drives being where the storage is. And the third one is a redundancy, just like in the hard drives. So if something goes wrong over in the green area, like some data gets corrupted, something's wrong with the NVMe, it's okay, we have our backup here. I don't care about that for how I'm going to use this. I'm not worried about that. This is not long-term storage at any by any means, I'm just going to put them into a combined RAID 0 where they combine into one drive. So you can see 2 plus 2 plus 2 equals approximately 6. You lose a little bit during the formatting, but that's fine. So now I'm going to have two areas that I can work on my uh, NAS. I can have my hard drives, which is more of a deep storage, put things in there, potentially pull them off and access them quickly. But I'm not constantly moving stuff onto the hard drive. And then I have uh, my NVMe storage, which is going to be faster. So it 
automatically says you want to create a volume. Of course you do. Volume is where you're going to store your stuff. So we'll say create a volume on a new storage pool. No, because I've already made one. Create a volume on an existing storage pool. Yes, that's the one I just made. We're going to call this NVMe. Oops, NVMe scratch. It's going to go on the one I just made and it's going to be everything. You could set it smaller and you could have it set in half. You can have three and three or something, whatever. Do whatever you want. You could split them up. I don't want to do that. Okay, so now we're going to create some folders. Uh, make sure we're recording here. Yes, we are. Okay. Uh, we'll create some folders that we can work on in our new drive. So we're coming here. I just went to control panel. That there. Uh, da, 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 shared folder. Okay, so we're going to create a new shared folder. Um, I'm going to call it maybe SSD working. It's fine. Uh, I don't want to put it in there. I want to put it in my new one right there. It's a new folder. I'm going to call it uh, area for SSD, SSD dump. So anytime anyone like me, I'm the only working off this, but anyone else who's in my organization or my family wants to dump videos, they put it in here and later we'll sort out where they go in the big hard drive. This is just essentially what it is. I don't need to encrypt it because it's just me. Uh, permissions, you can set it up where it's locked by, by user. So that's one of the nice things here. You can have it, we can have multiple users. You can have the admin, then you can have like management, like the parents or something, or the bosses or whatever, the managers. And then you can have the lower groups, like maybe students or something like that, or your kids or whatever. And you can set up different areas on this NAS that are accessible or non-accessible depending on the group, right? Uh, if you have multiple, maybe you're in an organization, you have like the video editing group, the graphic design group, whatever, you can put files in different areas. You don't necessarily want them getting into each other's stuff, potentially like screwing up each other's files by accident, that kind of stuff. So you can have you know, user group, video editor, user group, this kind of stuff. Uh, administrators will have their own area potentially for, you know, more sensitive documents, that kind of stuff. You know, time sheets and that kind of crap you don't want just anyone getting access to, so you can lock that off. Um, this is just for, and for kids, for example, you put movies on here and you can have like, maybe you have like violent movies or something on here as well. So you can have like a group that's like, okay, you have the parents can access these more violent movies or whatever. And then the kids aren't allowed to access those because they're young. They only have access to their own group, which is like kids shows or something like that. Whatever. I don't need, <laughs> I don't need any of this. So, uh, just, it's just me, just this guy. So you, you can see it popped up over here. This is my hard drive. Uh, and there we go. It's my hard drive. I've been messing around with it. It already has videos on it, some personal stuff and some emulation stuff that I use for testing tablets and that kind of crap. I also have my new SSD. It has nothing on it right now, but it will eventually. Uh, we can test this out. We can move some files and we'll be fantastic. The last thing that I do is I plugged in a, an external hard drive. That's all that I did. So just an external hard drive, just a Seagate hard drive, nothing fancy, whatever. Uh, and I plugged it in. Now this is a temporary location right now. I'm gonna end up moving it somewhere better. Uh, but we can see here, this is, it's just synchronizing, it's doing its thing. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna plug in my external hard drive. Now, this hard drive will not be part of the storage pool here. It'll actually be separate. Think of this as its own computer, like it is, it is its own computer, and you're just plugging in an external hard drive. And then later, when I go on my computer and I wanna access this data, I can actually also ex access this external hard drive as well which is cool because then I don't have to take this with me. I don't have to have it anywhere near my computer. I can just run it over here, plug it into my NAS, and then when I want to go on my network, I want actually to have like, I call it like a cold storage, not technically cold, because you're not like leaving this on a shelf and then plugging it in and backing it up, um, but it is a secondary thing. So it just allows me to move files off of these, I don't know, just in case. It just I just like to have that idea for some for very, 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 very important stuff. The reason that I did that, plugging it in here to the USB devices, is I want like kind of a warm storage, which is my volume one hard drives. I want like a hot storage, which is the NVMe. That thing's constantly going under load. And then I want like a fairly cool storage. What I mean by cool is it's not gonna be running all the time. I'm not gonna be putting stuff on here and messing around with it. Because this is gonna be a place that I'm like, I need my data to be like double safe. So Everything on here is all good and dandy, but like I want to be able to put stuff that's very important onto this external hard drive. Um, and it's not going to be constantly accessed. It's not going to experience wear and tear and that kind of stuff. And then the other thing is I can disconnect the hard drive, physically disconnect the hard drive and take it with me. I can, if it's super important stuff, I can put it into like a storage unit, like physically into a storage unit or like, you know, your parents' house or something like that in case 
God forbid you have a hurricane or something and it destroys your house and it takes your NAS and your hard drive with it. Right now it's like, oh, it took my NAS with me, like it got destroyed. But regardless, I have my like cold storage USB hard drive that I like have in storage or whatever, right? The other thing is you can just take it with you. Like if you're like, I'm going to travel and I need all these files with me, right? You can use this as your primary interface. You don't need to have your, you know, all your stuff plugged in and hooked up to your computer all the time. It's over there in the NAS, move stuff on there. When I'm like, all right, it's time to go. I just walk over, eject it pick it up and take it with me. So here's the NVMe, just dragging right from my computer, by the way. There's not, I'm dragging it from my computer into this browser. I'm not doing anything fancy here. It's that easy, just drag and drop, drag and drop, drag and drop. You can do it other ways. You can set up things. You can like link up your NAS in here, but I have no problem just using the browser. Again, I'm covering this from a basic user level, not like sysadmin, like that's fine. Sysadmin, they, they're good. They do what they do and they have their own groups. I'm not covering this from that. So there you go, now there's my video. It's going to be nice and fast. Obviously, it's going to be super fast. It's a SSD, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to also show you the hard drive. So we'll come in here. We'll go to Bo. Bo is me. I'm Bo. Uh, we'll come in here, and we'll do that again. Now, the hard drives are going to be reasonably fast, right? They're not slow by any means, these hard drives. Like, they're running in RAID. There's they're fast enough, especially with contiguous data, like video files. Video files are large chunk files. The hard drive will not struggle with those at all. It's just fast. You just dump them in there and it's gonna be super quick. However, hard drives will start to struggle somewhat when you get into little wee files. And that can be slow. That can actually slow things down um, for like file movement. Like let's come in here, what's this here? Yeah, like there's, we're getting into like major files, like thousands, tens of thousands of files. And when you move that into a hard drive, it will be slower because you're, you're writing onto it. It's not writing a continuous thing. It's potentially writing all over the place. It can get slower. So it'll still be quick. But one thing that you can do is then you can use this for your NVMe. You can move that over to your NVMe, dump that in there, and it will be much faster to write. It'll just be consistent. The USB device, actually, I haven't really paid attention to how fast it is. It should be reasonably quick. Let's come in here and let's get that again. Okay, it, sh it should be reasonably fast. I don't know. It's an external hard drive running over USB-A, but it's five gigabit per second port. So it should be reasonably fast. I don't see it being any different. Yeah, it's, it's basically as fast as the hard drives because like the, the interface of the USB is faster than the hard drive can go. We'll put it that way. So nice and quick. So, I mean, honestly, that's what I wanted to cover in this video. Um, uh, it's a, I've used the Terramaster stuff before and they are good. Their stuff is very good. In fact, the first NAS that I ever used and reviewed on my channel was a TerraMaster NAS. And it's so easy to use that I was like, all right, let's 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 do my first NAS video. I found them very intimidating before I touched them because I didn't know much. And my first ever NAS video was a TerraMaster um, NAS because I was like, all right, I can cover this and I'm comfortable with this product. Uh, I watched some reviews and they're pretty high level stuff, but I was like, I think I can figure it out. And I started using it. I was like, man, this is really easy to use. So. I think it's intimidating for people to get into NAS who aren't like like super tech savvy or maybe they're tech adjacent like they do like graphic design video editing like they're doing tech and they're using tech all the time but they're not like covering technology necessarily they're not like a reviewer like me um, so they may be intimidated by a new piece of technology but I rest, rest assured don't be this is very easy like you literally take the stuff you put the hard drives in the case which is very easy and tactile you plug it in if you want to do it on your phone you just download the app and you just click through a bunch of times and then it's done. It's set up here. You come in here, you create a storage pool, you go add folder, add stuff, and you just start drag and drop, drag and drop, drag and drop. That's all you gotta do. That's the simple part. Honestly, that's the video. I don't think I need to do too much of it. It's a very good product. The quality of the brand is known and well-established. Terramaster's been around forever and they're well-established and well-accepted and well-liked in the like storage and ecosystem people environment all those people know about it uh, and I as I slowly appeal to the my my viewers who are like um, you know probably low level like not necessarily into this kind of stuff like deep storage type stuff uh, but also getting into the mid level I think a lot of you guys potentially don't get into this type of thing because uh, you may find it intimidating but rest assured it is not intimidating it's easy simple safe uh, there can be a little bit of a buy-in cost, but the nice thing with these uh, Terramaster raids as well, you don't necessarily need to have everything all set up from day one. You can add as you go. We know the prices are going up right now in terms of storage. It will go up very fast. RAM is going to go up. RAM is way up right now, massively up right now. 
and storage is going to start going up. So now is the time to buy. I don't like to necessarily always pressure people into buying things, but I can tell you it is the time to buy right now. It is the time to buy.